Welcome everyone to our fourth night of the San Jose Poetry Festival. Tonight featuring Juan Felipe Herrera, Arlene Biela, Janice Lobo Sapigal, and we also have a musical guest with us tonight, uh, Melody Takata and John Carlos Perea with Francis Wong and uh, Jimmy Biala. Yeah. <laughs> now they're gonna <clears throat> come in a little bit later and uh, do some solo uh, performances for us uh, today, tonight and um, <clears throat> with our guests. Um, but as people are coming into the room, I just want to let you know uh, that uh, San Jose Poetry Festival 2020 is presented by Poetry Center San Jose and is sponsored in part by Festival and Cultural Affairs grants from the city of San Jose, a grant from SV Creates in partnership with the County of Santa Clara and the California Arts Council, funding from poets and writers and with support from Ann and Mark's Art Party the Center for Literary Arts. Uh, we would also like to acknowledge and offer our deepest gratitude to our originally booked live venues for this festival. The Art Boutique, Books Inc, Caravan Lounge, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Library, Forager, History San Jose, Recycle Bookstore, and Works San Jose Art and Performance Center. And also to our membership who have helped make this event possible. Without our membership, nothing. We absolutely rely on our members to make this operation go. And um, a few um, people I'd like to thank, I hope you folks can still hear me. Is that, you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay, great, <clears throat> because my ship here at home is not like your ship over there. We're a little less modern, but that's okay. <clears throat> I wanna thank um, our, uh, our board of directors uh, for their support of this festival. And um, that includes Nils Peterson, who is our founder of uh, San, uh, Poetry Center San Jose way back in the late 70s. Also want to thank Scorpion Excellent, Joe Miller, Amy Meyer, Shaka Campbell, Bill Cazzini, Mighty Mike McGee. Uh, Bill Cazzini, Mighty Mike McGee uh, are part of the festival committee. And a special profound thanks to Julia Canavesi, who uh, it, provided much magic to help this uh, this festival go thank you so much julia for making uh, making the the, the last minute uh, miracle push and um special thanks uh goes also to uh dave eisbach i don't know if is dave eisbach here can somebody uh, bring him to the fore Dave Eisbach, uh, who uh, started, there he is. I see it, Dave. Let me get you spotlighted. Thank you, Dave. Way back in 2015, started the show, the San Jose Poetry Festival at the Le Petit Trianon Theater, right? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I wasn't the first one to uh, bring the, uh, the uh, festival to light. Sally Ashton in 2007 uh, did, uh, broke the uh, ice uh, down at the uh, History Park. That's and, right. And I had attended that as a, uh, an arts commissioner, and, uh, but I, uh, I appreciate the, uh, uh, the notice, I really do. But it's Sally Ashton who really uh, started it. Uh, and I just rejuvenated it in 2015. Let's thank Sally Ashton for the California Poets Festival 2006 and 2007. 
Sally, Ashton, many, many thanks. Uh, those were uh, big productions down at uh, History Park San Jose at our home, the Edwin Markham House. And um, uh, that was uh, much appreciated with many, many uh, fine talents. So thank you uh, to the board and uh, thank you to our volunteers for helping uh, make this show happen. Um, I am... Phil, uh, let's see, is everybody in the room? Yeah, great, okay, very good. Here we go. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce our guests one at a time as they come up to the so-called stage. And um, <laughs> the Zoom stage in Zoomlandia. Um, but, um, before I, I do that, um, because of the nature of our times, uh, many uh, loved ones have moved on and are now our ancestors. And um, I just want to have a moment of silence. I'm going to light a candle here. All right. And this for our loved ones who have moved on and for our mother earth and all her water friends, air friends, and all of our land friends. peace and love. We're going to let this burn over here. Okay, I'm next to the microscope. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to find the peace and the love and you need a little help with the light. Each of us is a light and together we will find the way through the darkness yes as a greater light yes now with Janis Lobo Sapigao a daughter of immigrants from the Philippines she is the author of two books of poetry microchips for millions Philippine American writers and artists in 2016 and like a solid to a shadow this from Timeless Infinite Light 2017 by way of Nightboat Books. She was named one of the San Francisco Bay Area's Women to Watch in 2017 by KQED Arts. She is a Vona Voices and Kundaman Poetry Fellow. She earned a Master of Fine Arts degree in writing from California Institute of the Arts, CalArts, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Ethnic Studies with honors and a minor in Urban Studies and Planning from the University of California, San Diego. She is currently an Assistant Professor of English at Skyline College in San Bruno, California, and the 2020-21 Santa Clara County Poet Laureate and a Poet Laureate Fellow with the Academy of American Poets. Please bring on Janice Lobo Sapigal. Come on <laughs> down. Yeah. Time. All right. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I um, really love the way that Rob started this event. I think that it's really necessary and helpful um, in terms of like cleansing and cre creating cleansing energy. I think I really needed that. I think these days I am mourning how we lose everything we love. Um, I am also grieving losses in addition to celebrations. And today I'm just like entirely heartbroken, just kind of thinking and taking into account what's going on in our world. Um, and even though I know I'm going to cry, I am okay. <laughs> I am totally fine doing that. Uh, but I wanted to let you all know that today I'm really heavy hearted because I learned very recently that 
um, a colleague of mine um, is very sick and it's just really hard to think about. Um, in addition to the grieving and the mourning and the heaviness, I also am really honored to be the current Poet Laureate of Santa Clara County. Um, I'm really honored to be here too yeah. with uh, Marlene and Juan Felipe. <laughs> Um, as most of you may know, uh, my focus as Poet Laureate is on youth and working with young writers. Um, I think that one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is because, yes, I believe our youth have something to say, but I also have been thinking about a quote by uh, Filipino poet Patrick Rizal, who says that he became a writer because he had things to ask. And I think every day our youth are asking us to listen to them. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I have organized my reading tonight in terms of past, present, and future. So I'll be reading like one old poem, sharing one new poem and video, and then um, another thing I'm working on. <laughs> so I think that past, present, and future is literally what connects us to each other. It's what creates intergenerationality. And I think that also allows me the room to connect with other people. So this is an old poem that I love reading. And I, it's, it comes from a time when I used to ask myself a lot of questions about where I came from. So this poem is uh, dedicated to anyone who has heard it before. It's called Where My Name Is From. <laughs> my name is Janice, Janice Lobo Sopigo. I'm from San Jose, California, the Bay Area, not quite San Francisco, not at all Oakland. I'm from this in-between. I'm from a pause, a needed moment of clarity, I am from the face people make when I don't answer with the birthplace of an Asian country. I am from the way I have to justify myself when I say I was born here. I am from my parents and my father named me. My mother told me that my father name might be John in English named me. His name might also be Juan or June and the J, the J sound in Janice sounds like a joke like do you get it? Like the unfunny punchline, like you're about to sneeze, but you decide not to after all, after your fingers are clamping down on your nose and the Nis and Janice pretends to hide behind itself. Like you can see its shadow, like you have to pretend that it is not there. Janice means a form of Jane, which is a female form of John. Janice means Jane means John means I come from my father whose name is not his own. My family says my name like this, Janice. Janice, the ja means agreement, it means yeah, sure, means yeah, yeah, whatever, and the niece sounds like, look here, I found you in that spot called ni, I see you there, your shadow tells me, niece, ni es, my girl, daughter, my girl relative, my niece, you are not hiding, for why are you hiding, come out, and I am Ilocana, my mother is from Alo'o, Ominga, and Pangasinan, Philippines, my father is from Asinga and Pangasinan, in Philippines. <laughs> My stepfather is from Kabugao, Ilocos, or Philippines. Umingan, Asingan, Kabugao, Pangasinan, Philippines. When translated into English, it means very far. It means hella far. <laughs> it means your tongue and your stomach must get used to being off the grid, to bumpy roads and potholes made bigger by monsoons and tsunamis to far monsoons and to far tsunamis that are caused by a drought called homesickness, to homesickness as flight, to homesickness as poetic curse, to homesickness as the route on the map, and to the end of far as the end of homesickness. My name, Janice, does not exist in Filipino. Janice is Janice is non-existent in the Filipino alphabet called by Bayin. The J and the J sound and the rule I before E except after C, the rule whereby my name is exemplified. Sometimes C sounds like S, but S cannot sound like C. It further complicates the location of my name. My name, therefore, is very much American, very much English. My American name overshadows where I am from. My middle name, Lobo, means wolf in Spanish, means balloon in Filipino means embarrassing in middle school when my friends find out. Lobo, depending on how you pronounce it, can also be Lubo or Lubong, which is mud or earth or the globe. My middle name is a place and I return to it. It is an in-between. Lobo to me sounds like, no, no, don't go there. This is rock bottom. This is the end, but this won't end. This is the poem. My last name, Sabigao, means wait. 
until you turn 24 to do enough research, to ask questions, to wait and find out that it only means nuts. It means nuts of the bird. <laughs> so pigao means pretend it means seeds, seeds of a bird, and then poeticize the bird and let it fly. And then poeticize the seeds. I am the seed of a bird that flies. My dad flies. My dad is the bird. And I carry his name far. I fly. Whew. Yeah. All right. That poem is about my name. Thank you. I have a friend who says that our names are our first poems. And I thought, what if I broke down every single letter, every syllable, turn over the syllables in Ilocano and in English, and that kind of helped me come up with this poem. Um, I want to share my screen really briefly for a present video. Um, this video I'm going to share was recently published with um, the Poetry Project out of New York City. They asked for a video, and I don't make videos, <laughs> is what I want to say. <laughs> but I made a video, and I'm really glad that I did I think of, now I think of videos like poems where we can document, where we can keep things, where in some ways things last forever. Um, and so this poem I'm going to share um, is about something I wanna keep forever. <laughs> and so, oh, I'm sharing the wrong thing. Sorry, let me try that one more time. I was sharing an image of myself, that's funny. <sighs> okay. Are you ready? Are people ready? If you're ready, I like to do this thing. Can you throw ones in the chat if you're ready? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or if you're here. <laughs> I like to do that. Oh, thanks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we know, right, on Zoom that people are here and people are listening. And if you want to keep doing that for the other poets and performers tonight, please do that. I don't mean to take the hosting responsibilities from you, Rob. It's a great way to interact. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna play this poem for you. It's more like a bat, sorry, wrong one. Starting over. I told you I don't make videos. <laughs> 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 they say grief comes in waves, but I'd venture to say it's more like a bat that comes smack in the face Sometimes Just grief comes <laughs> swinging full speed in the frozen food aisle, peeping sweet corn staring back, or it is in front of the TV at midnight watching a show taking place at a garage sale, or it is being at work at your computer in the middle of an email after sending a text, after laughing. It is being asked when you're free and wondering why you have more time and realizing the weekend used to be filled with her scent, her TV shows. It hits while driving on the freeway on 880 or 101 or the interchange between the two. My mother reminds me of the whole South Bay. Here, the water is stilled. It is salt ponds and wetland. It is marsh and water, the color of evening sun. This is Ohlone land. It is gold and sand and marble, and maybe our ancestors are only ours until we give them back to the sky. And when we look up, and when the stars see us, maybe our love is at flight, tossed between this world and the next. Grief is a circular force. Maybe grief is also a revolution. that with me. Um, I didn't know why I was taking so much footage um, over the past two years and I'm really glad I did. Um, 
I love that the last picture is like me and my mom hanging out at Costco, which I, I love going to Costco. I also love going to Home Goods and Ross. Um, and I, I love going there with her. And um, my mom recently passed away, but as, as I go now, I pretend she's there with me. And I just say like, hey mom, does this shirt look good? You know, should I buy this face mask? And um, the answer is always yes. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but yes, that's definitely an image of where I am right now. Um, and so I just wanted to share that. Uh, for the, the future part of um, this reading, I wanted to share that somehow um, I've, been managed, I've managed to finish a thing I've been working on for seven years, which is um, a young adult novel. <laughs> and it's a novel in verse. And uh, I almost, I started writing it seven years ago, but it, it actually really speaks to me now. So I wanted to read a little bit of it. And it's from a manuscript that's currently called All Those English. Um, and it is purposefully grammatically incorrect, which I love. I love Filipino accented English. And so um, this poem, I'm going to read two poems from that manuscript. Uh, one is called The Truth. So this is it. The Truth. When we got home, we had a family meeting, which we'd never had before. Everyone was tired, but we sat in a circle on the couches in the living room, and Jay and Ma led our discussion. They were open, honest, and direct. There's nothing to worry about. Okay, Balasang? Okay, Balong? Jay, for the first time ever, took the initiative because he knew Ma needed him too, and they were a team. We are a team, Jay said. <laughs> All of us. Your mom has stage one cancer. It is early and she is fighting. And we are in this together. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner, Ma confessed. We cried, hugged, and ordered Ma's favorite pineapple pizza for dinner. It arrived quickly and we accidentally got buffalo chicken wings for free with our order. On the house, because the universe knew what kind of day and evening we'd had, that Ma had. But what house? What truth, what talk. We never had this conversation. It's how I imagined a white family on TV might have ended a dramatic episode. We had a classic Filipino American conversation when we got home, which means we didn't and we all knew why. And that's the truth. <laughs> and I wanted to share an alternate title for that, which is classic Filipino American. Maybe I should add conversation to that. <laughs> um, that was the truth. And I wanted to read one more poem from the manuscript that's called um, The For Rent Game. Okay, The For Rent Game. I like this game. Rocky and I made a game out of looking for as many red and white for rent signs as possible. Sometimes as Ma would drive, we would count them like the way most kids would play the slug bug or license plate games. The for rent game was easier because Ma liked to drive around on the streets instead of the freeways and we'd find some signs and if Ma was stopped at a red light, we'd ask her, this one, that one, how about that big one over there? Can we live there? How about here near Great Mall, near other Filipino kids? near people who are not waiting for us to leave. And Ma would always say no. She would find some reason to not like the place. It's too close to your cousin's house. It's too far from work. It's too far from our schools, from our friends. Too expensive, too big, too small, too ugly, too much. Not enough Filipinos around. Not enough Mexican people around. There are black neighbors. There are white neighbors, it's a busy street. There's a bus stop in front. It's not safe, it's not right. Rocky, Ma, and me all lost that day. There were no red for rent signs in any of the windows or in any of the front yards in the houses near Goldilocks. There were, however, many blue signs about the security systems inside those houses. Sayang, Ma whispered to us, time to go home, but where? Rent game. <laughs> I think that, you know, maybe for me, 
So growing up, I think it was really easy for my brother and I to make games out of anything. Um, and I think before I read this last little really short poem, I wanted to say a few things, which is that um, I hope we can enter any room and let someone younger than us speak first. That includes digital rooms. I hope that we can exist in silence and still be seen. And I hope this for a lot of young people. Um, when I was younger, I had a teacher who didn't believe I had written an essay with big words. And I really did well without their belief. Uh, but imagine what I could have done with it. <laughs> um, I got a D in one of my high school English courses but I was 17 and in love and school wasn't a priority. Um, but that was just one sliver of my youth. Um, and I think that's also why I wanted to focus so much on youth in Santa Clara County when we're talking about the pandemic and being at school and schooling from home, we're also talking and not talking about youth. Um, and research has proven that youth first engage with politics through their very first literary and poetic arts showcases and classes. And I think that because we have a government that is largely anti-youth, who blames a lot of his political failures on the power of youth, um, it's even more important to, to encourage them to speak and write poems. So this last poem is a draft, and I wanted to share it with you all. And it's called Listen, very short. Listen, listen closely, and listen long to the children who have lost their parents, who have lost their friends, who watch the news, who see their spirits in themselves, who have nothing to hold but signs and cell phones, who know how much closer death and the precarity of life knock in close range. And that's what I have for you today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I, I guess I'll pass the mic. I'm here to listen and join and attend, attend now. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to clap yeah. for you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let me introduce Arlene as a Pinay poet born in San Francisco and raised in the South Bay. She has been participating in poetry performances and workshops for over 30 years and was the 2016-2017 Santa Clara County Poet Laureate. She is the author of several collections of poetry, including Bone, Continental Drift, and her Beckoning Hands, which won the 2015 American Book Award. Her latest book, One Inch Punch, was published in January 2019. She is ready for November. She is also ready for L Lumpia Fest 4, as soon as the universe gives us her blessing, the universe will. Beautiful. Oh, man. <laughs> One more uh, deep breath and round of applause for our sister Janice. Mm -hmm. um, when I first met her, I don't know how many years ago now, but we were doing a reading together um, that Barbara Jane Raids invited us to in San Francisco. And she was reading from her book, Microchips for Millions. And uh, I'm just gonna say this right now, whoever is a middle or high school teacher in this valley or beyond, that needs to be part of your curriculum. I don't care if you teach math, <laughs> if you teach English, if you teach dance, this book is, um, you know, it's, it's so important and so vital. And, and I swear when she was reading from it, I felt like she was talking a story about my mom and our family, both of our mothers grew up um, you know, working uh, in, in Silicon Valley with the uh, microchips and the whole industry. Um, and so I would just say, make sure you get a book. I'll put it in the chat later. Maraming <laughs> um, Salama. I haven't seen this many people like together uh, maybe since what? Beginning of March, right? So um, thank you. Always thank you to Rob and Mike and Bill, Scorpiana, everybody at Poetry Center San Jose. Um, amazing. Um, please, people, I'm going to do this plug right now. The, uh, as, as the whole economy is suffering, the arts, uh, including Poetry San Jose, is one of the city of San Jose's grants. They are suffering because um, 
our source of funding is the hotel tax. As you know, nobody's oh. coming to town for anything. So um, it's in the office I work. It's, uh, we're 70% down from last year. So um, you love Poetry San Jose and what they bring, please uh, find it in your heart to uh, throw them some lumpia and renew your membership or get a new membership. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna uh, share screen for a photo um, I would love to uh, show you for just a few seconds. Can I go ahead and do that, Rob? Go for it. And uh, please don't mind the uh, the documents, <laughs> sheets, and all that. Um, this first poem I want to do is interesting, Janice, that you said you were uh, doing past, present, and future. I think I'm kind of going future, present, and past. Because I thought about the exact same thing. I'm like, did she send that to me in my sleep last night? I don't know. <laughs> this picture is um, uh, of my father-in-law, Carlin Jesus de Rosario, from the big island of Hawaii, from a small town of Honoka, which is um, kind of, uh, it's up north, up near Waipio Valley, um, between Waipio and Hilo. And uh, it's, it's a small town, it's plantation uh, town, and that's where he grew up uh, with his uh, Filipino mom and dad, they had a store. And um, I am, am blessed still and was blessed to call him my father-in-law because he's seriously like the sweetest person, sweetest guy. I don't know uh, how we got so lucky to have him. And um, there's a couple pictures of uh, our family. And uh, I just wanted to share this because this poem is for him. We lost him right before uh, we went into shelter in place. Oh. And so we did, we were fortunate to have, um, you know, to be with him in the hospital, which was, which was uh, again, a blessing as I know now so many people um, our family included just up until this past Monday are grieving during quarantine, you know, and, and I know, you know, many people here, uh, you know, like Janice and other people that are with us in this room um, are feeling that just unreal difficulty of having to grieve when you uh, have to limit family and friends who want to be there with you and especially physically. Um, but they just have to send it through you, through spirit. So this first poem, um, my father-in-law loves slack key guitar and, and all the old favorites. Um, and the title of this poem is called, What to Take With You When You Evacuate Your Body. Umaka ka i kana hi ilave. Kababa lo hi maya uma okele. Umaka ka i kana hi ilave. Kababa lo hi maya uma okele. Okele maya uika nui Avala aune puni wai pio. Wakele mai aui kanu imanu. Avala aune puni wai pio. What to take with you when you evacuate your body? Leave behind your vintage aloha shirts that will become your grandson Joshi's prized new wardrobe. Leave behind the wrecked heart valve, the crashed liver, your fractured rib, hip. Leave behind the many ER visits, those dreaded hospital days with food too bland for your island taste buds. Leave behind worries of your wife, your kids and grandkids, the worries of who will overwater your orchids and bonsai trees. Leave behind your bad knees, your walker, and your cane. Leave your bones, teeth, and ashes. Leave each cell of your pain. 
Take With You Hi'i Lave, sung by Gabby Pahinui. Sing it with us when you visit in our dreams. Take our aloha from here to Honoka and beyond, where Uncle Jaime Apodago, Auntie Training, and your mom are waiting for you. Take these songs, take this hula we offer you as you linger in the hospital room, refusing to leave until the music stops and the lumpia, manapua, and musubi are all gone. Take the laughter of your grandkids, Jojo, Kai, Joshi Boy, and Nani, when you do that crab pinch with your toes on their legs. Take your yelling, hey, offsides, ref. Nani, push up, push up. Take all that yelling from the sidelines of the thousand soccer games of your four kids and your four grandkids' games. Take the FaceTime video of Kiana's last game before lockdown the last one you would ever watch before you cross the water. Leave us with your lei hulumanu, the delicate peacock feather lays you so carefully craft, sewing intricate patterns of turquoise and green that shimmer like the sea. Bless them with the superpower of flight and we will find you. We will make, we will meet you deep in the valley on the black sand beach of Waipio. For Carla and Jesus del Rosario. Screen share real quickly again, if that's okay. This is um, an ekphrastic poem, which, uh, if anyone is unsure what an ekphrastic poem is, that is when it's sort of like a call and response. So you experience a maybe a visual artwork or another artwork, and then you write about it, and that is uh, your that's the call and then you are responding to it. And um, few years back, this is the artist you see here uh, standing near his work. His name is Guillermo Galindo. And he's, he's a fantastic artist. He um, had an exhibit called Border Cantos. Border Cantos, it was at San Jose Museum of Art. And at the time, uh, we were lucky enough, they do a annual poetry invitational each year and the poet laureate gets to select poets to come and write uh, ecclesiastic poems and show work on uh, whatever artwork is calling them. So this piece here uh, is called Angel Exterminador and what you're looking at, can everybody see it okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, what it is uh, are pieces uh, from the border wall between California and Mexico. What you see hanging there is a section of a border wall, the corrugated uh, metal. And then if I can, but you can't see too well, uh, my apologies, but it's hanging from a chain and then the framing of wood uh, is part of um, 
what the border patrol would use to uh, do what they call drag chains. So they have these huge, you know, commercial tires. They would uh, tie them to the the uh, chain that you see they're holding up this this section of wall in the art piece, and then they would sweep over the sand to look for footprints of people trying to uh, cross the border of kids and, and their families and uh, and that's one of the ways that they that they use to uh, try and catch people uh, crossing the border so um, this is a piece I'm going to stop sharing this right now and I'm happy to send you I'll send you a link to later to a video uh, the artist actually plays that it's a musical instrument that he plays uh, and it's it, as you can imagine, really amazing. Stole this title from Vim Vendors. When the child was child, she raced her little brothers to the top of the rainbow painted carnival slide, the one she'd been dreaming of all week. Feet clanking up the metal staircase, rising in the middle of the desert town, a mirage of fantastic colors, strange music, and dust. Out of breath at the landing, she twirls in the four directions. To the south, her abuelita's hands reaching out to her. Cuidate, mija. Watch your step. Watch your step. To the east, her mother's song. Sing your way home at the end of the day. Sing your way home. Cast your troubles away. Smile and remind. It will lighten your load. It will shorten your road. If you sing your way home. To the west, her older brother on a fishing boat into the north, the memory of her father's thirst in the melt zone. Never turn your back to the sea, he would say. The sea, the sandstorm, the blast of La Migra. Hail of bullets and the slide is lifted in a horrendous crash. Twister of dreams knock the wind out of him. He is broken and bent without the name his ancestors gave him. Gutted like a fish. Scales scraped off until the rust of his skin is gone and delicate flesh and the scorching sun have textured him a new name. Angel, Angel. Noose of drag train falls to the ground and the wind beats the corrugated lives out of the body singing, fly home, my sweet angel. Fly home through the sky. And when the child was child, she took a deep breath grabbed the rough edges of burlap and let go. Her body shooting like a bullet through border lies, blasting through impenetrable walls, while her angels watched her fly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody doing okay? <laughs> I'll take a dose. If you have, a, instead of the one, I'll take the dose. You can send me a dose. <laughs> well, one Felipe has got millions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I will end with uh, water poem because I think we all need it. <laughs> I need it. Uh, and not a little, but a lot, a lot of water. Um, this is the old poem, but I, uh, I haven't read it for a while and I hope that it will bring you some medicine. Uh, this is for my mom. Ocean. I'm standing at the edge of the sea looking for my mother. There are signs that she has been here. A calm wind. A lay of orchids floating away from the tide pool in the lava rocks. The scent of pikake she smooths into her skin. This is where she practices the power of belief. Her prayer beads held in the form of seawater moving through her fingers. Close your eyes and drift, she tells me. 
This is how you cross into breathing. Sea turtles glide against her legs, poke their heads above the water and look her in the eye. If I could just close my eyes, taste the salt water on my tongue and gulp down mouthfuls of it, this would be how to cleanse grief and guilt. To drink of the sea and its rhythm of knowing, to pierce and carve my skin with a broken shell, or walk barefoot on spiny coral. To suffer willingly, praying that she will be well, praying the tumor inside her, dancing wildly, whirling her into fear, will disappear. You're not listening to me, she chides gently. When I was a young girl holding on to my sister's hands as we jumped into the crashing waves, and then my feet couldn't touch the ground and suddenly we were caught in a riptide. Back then I begged God, I pray the way that you do now. Please, please, I'll do anything. I enter the water slowly, the salt stings my eyes. I begin swimming, pulling away from the shore. And I can feel her pushing the prayer beads into my right hand. Stop and rest, she whispers through the wind. When the sea wants you, she'll let you know. Look at me. I'm still here. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Love and blessings out to all of you. Oh, thank you. Irene, thank you so much. Janice, thank you so much. Both of you culture warriors and worlds of embraces. And thank you for the blessings, both of you, that you've come here to bring to all of us, uh, especially during these times, um, coming from places of great difficulty uh, to share. Thanks, Janice. And um, Arlene, thank, thanks to who is that in the background playing the ukulele? Hmm? Kiana. <laughs> the one who shared this. Is she still there? No, she's doing a, like K pop dances or something. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Kiana as well. <laughs> I will pass it on. And now for our uh, guest, Juan Felipe Herrera, the 21st Poet Laureate of the United States and is the first Latino to hold the position. From 2012 to 2014, Herrera served as California State Poet Laureate. Herrera's many collections of poetry include Every Day We Get More Illegal, Notes, on the Assemblage, Senegal of Taxi, Half of the World in Light, New and Selected Poems, a recipient of the Pen Beyond Margins Award and the National Book Critics Circle Award, and 187 Mexicanos Can't Cross the Border, Undocuments 1971 to 2007. He is also the author of Crash Boom Love, a novel in verse which received the America's Award. His books of prose for children include Skate Fate, Calling the Doves, which won the Ezra Jack Keats Award, Upside Down Boy, which was adapted into a musical for young audiences in New York City, and Cinnamon Girl, Letters Found Inside a Cereal Box. His book, Jabberwalking, a children's book focused on turning your wonder at the world around you into weird, wild, incandescent poetry was released in 2018. Herrera is also a performance artist and activist on behalf of migrant and indigenous communities and at-risk youth. Now, he is also accompanied by Francis Wong, John Carlos Pereira, Jimmy Biala, and Melody Takata. And I first, uh, just as an aside, uh, 
came because I don't see it here across our made your acquaintance or fell in love better said uh, to, to say I fell in love with one Felipe Herrera through his book Acrylica oh my that that uh, that just opened all the doors <laughs> it just kicked down the walls and said okay do it just <laughs> do it Rob please Put it together and let's welcome Juan Felipe Herrera to the stage with right. his guests. Oh, well, thank you so much. You know, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, Arlene and uh, all of you that put together the program. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, just the voices that, that I've heard tonight, you know, Arlene and Janice and, uh, and Robert. Just your voices, you know, your voices alone uh, are beautiful. And it's been a long time since I've been uh, in, a, in a room uh, of uh, writers and thinkers and poets and friends. Uh, and I, to, to hear your voice, just your voices, your melodies uh, in itself is, is, is great healing and great happiness. And I thank you, you know, usually I'm either looking at CNN or, um, you, know, uh, you know, outside, you know, the outside world. And things are very sharp sometimes, or very, well, we're all going places, you know. We're all going places in cars and, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe all of a sudden, isn't it? So, so it's good. It's good to be here in a, in a conversation of heart and, and beauty and familia and remembrances, and really, really, really good family, and really, really good friends. So it's uh, most, most unique for me. And also a great joy to be uh, with my uh, Ohana, you know, my music, my music Ohana, uh, Melody, and Francis, and John Carlos, and, and Yimi Confili and Viala. Uh, we've all been uh, doing music uh, and poetry, and who knows what we've been cooking for all these years. And Arlene just cooking, you know. Uh, uh, Francis, uh, Francis Wong, as you know, has been uh, doing so much uh, in um, recording uh, Asian improv uh, arts. He founded that organization. Uh, he's a community builder and leader. And I could go on about each one. Uh, uh, a Melody Takada, same thing. You know, she's a classical Japanese dancer since a very early age. She founded, uh, it was a Genryu uh, Foundation, uh, works, has worked very hard in Japantown, and has just mastered so many instruments, so many classical Japanese instruments. And, uh, you, you know, she doesn't come out and say, hey, you know, I'm a sensei. She, she doesn't come out and do that, but she is. Uh, such beautiful, humble, and genius uh, musicians. And Giancarlo's the same thing. He's a professor, teaches uh, Native uh, uh, arts and culture, uh, Native American, both. Uh, you know, just first people's uh, truth and his, uh, his, own, his own beautiful self and playing the bass. And of course, uh, Jimmy Confilin. I think he's been all around the world. Jimmy's kind of a Sagittarius, are we? I think Jimmy goes all around the world. And uh, he's taught in uh, uh, Beijing, and stayed in Beijing for quite a while, and Brazil, and Cuba, and on, and has founded a number of ensembles here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Um, I remember you were doing Samba Asia. And uh, so he's mastered many, many Afro percussion instruments and uh, Afro-Brazilian instruments. And, and I think he's made up his own instruments also. <laughs> And uh, he's always uh, available and always teaching uh, young children and all the way up to 150 years old. And, uh, you know, so generous. Each one is so generous, like each one here tonight. You know, a lot of generosity, a lot of compassion, uh, truth and beauty. And I think the poetry is secondary, you know. All of a sudden, poetry has become secondary and something else has risen up. And that's, I think that was the heart of it all at, from, from day one. So I thank all of you. And of course the team, 
the uh, the uh, the uh, Francis gave the group a name, uh, uh, Poetry Every Day, uh, Poetry Every Day Band. So that's that's who's here with us, as well as everyone else. So since since uh, Arlene is always teaching me a few words, this piece is called Ohana, 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 and it's uh, for those you know for those that passed on because of COVID and COVID nineteen. And for those that are surviving and struggling and, and fighting and, and dealing with it and attempting to cure it and the first responders and the nurses and the doctors and home remedies and all of us just thinking about it and sending out our love in whatever way we can in a poem, in a thought, in a chant, in a song, a ukulele, a smile. So this is, uh, Arlene made me write this. <laughs> indirectly <laughs> and uh, so it's called Ohana 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 and uh, the musicians are going to come in and out we're going to explore how that works out and uh, whatever happens is what should happen so there's no mistakes uh, uh, so J John Carlos uh, kicks it off with the bass Ohana, Ohana gathers, Ohana sings, Ohana sings praise for all those gone. Ohana, Ohana remembers those gone and those hurt and those in struggle for breath, warriors in life. Ohana sings for all and breathes for you and first responders. Ohana sings for you. Ohana sends you healing and emergency room doctors, doctoras, nurses, doctores. Ohana thanks you.
Ohana thanks you. Ohana sees you and thanks you again and embraces you and embraces you again. Ohana, many waves. Many waves, many oceans, many islands, many hearts beat and sparkle and breathe life for you from afar, from afar and near. We set these poems, these all life offerings, on this life table, this morning, this evening, mantel tablecloth, offerings and voices, and every word kindness can blossom a new life. We continue, Ohana, for you. Listen, listen, every word, every melody, every bass beat, every drum deepens and rounds the circle, every bass beat. soprano sax leaping and weeping and flying with hope every taiko every chime every bell Every base box, every familia table moves all space and calls you. Yes, you flourishing, floreciendo, nourishing, coming home, new galaxies. Mm -hmm. 
Gone, far, near, here, and there. Do not be afraid, Ohana, familia. Ohana carries you. Ohana lifeboats are being set for you. Steam rice and natto is ready. Steamed Cuban tortillas are ready. Dark grain noodles, mural painted plates, Seaweed soup, tortilla, sa salsa, adobo, noodles, and painted plates, and fried pineapples, and toasted corn, and fried bread, and balenzas, and enfrijoladas, and adobo, and chopsticks are set, and spoons, and tablecloths with your names, and all their names, sun, moon, ocean, mountain, valley, and street, and river, and lake, and creek, and cascade, and love is everything. is everything. Here and there 
and everywhere with you. Ohana, we fight for breath. We send you breath. Do not be afraid. We fight for you. We sing for you. For you, vidas together, live all life. Ohana, we say life with our bass strings. We say love with our bass box and chimes. We say Ohana with our saxophone on every corner. We say Vida with our families, with our infinite percussion of all love. We say one life, we say one life is all lives. We say Ohana. We say Ohana. We say, Oh, Hannah. was Ohana, 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 uh, with Melody and Pancho and John Carlos and Jimmy Confeeling. Uh, just a new piece for us in memory and in um, ceremony of those still uh, fighting the COVID virus. And for all of us being one family, apart or very near, does not matter. You know, this book, every day we get more illegal. It, it's just a whole other thing. I really love the kind of work we just did. And this is, this is a, a, you know, it's kind of a book, it's a book. And I, I really am thankful for City Lights uh, putting it together. And it's another kind of, uh, um, it's just another, it's another, another melody of uh, writing. This one is called Basho and Mandela. And uh, John Carlos is going to come in and out of this piece. Uh, Basho, of course, the, uh, the great uh, uh, poet of, of uh, Japan in the 1600s and the great writer of uh, a particular form of uh, haiku. And what I really liked about him in addition to his work, I think his work is the same thing. It's his uh, meditation upon life and his journeys uh, walking uh, through Japan and stopping at certain places and visiting uh, other writers, other poets in, this, in, in extreme weather and extreme duress. But it was a, uh, I don't know, a journey, uh, a very, uh, a journey of his life and a great example for our life. 
and the great challenge and how he stopped in certain places and recognized certain trees. That, that just the way it is, I think. That's the, that's the real way it is, as opposed to not recognizing anything at all and noticing what it's all about in a few words. Pasha and Mandela, and Mandela, of course, you know, uh, you know him, and Basho too. As Basho has said, it is a narrow road to the deep north. As Mandela has said, the haphazard segregation later became a well-orchestrated segregation. As Basho has said, the journey began with an attained awareness that at any moment you can become a weather exposed skeleton. Think of us in this manner. These are notes for your nourishment. Hold them as bowls of kindness. From journeys of bravery that will the will to seek and find the sudden turning rivers and the dawn eyed freedom. Mm You know, in this collection, I, uh, I decided to just say things and I decided to do the best I could to say things that I was hoping would relate to you, that would relate to us, that would relate to what's going on. Uh, there were so many things that we want to talk about, as you know, so many things, so many Every moment we would respond, which is good. It's good to respond. It's kind of a time where we feel crushed by all the disinformation, distortions. It's so much that it, we, I think we just continue to walk on and that's a good thing. And I wanted to, to write back, to, to talk back. And I wanted to speak quite a bit about the separation of our families at the border. And I wanted to, to point at big things that we, you know, that we just, just go by, they just go right by us and it's hard to grasp them. Because things that go so, the things go so fast, whether they're true or not true. And we don't have to respond. It's good to be like Basho, take the journey. And it's also good to do what you can. This is called Don't Push the Button. And uh, Jimmy is going to uh, journey with us on this one. Don't push the button. Just don't understand why so many want you to push the button. Don't push it. Please don't push it. You're making me nervous. I'm slouching toward nowhere. Art is not enough. Performance is not enough. Something is missing. Don't push it. Don't push it to fill the vacuum. It is something that has not been solved before. It's that simple. You must find that, achieve that. It is not too late. The 
button, of course, is not the answer. Of course, it provides an ounce or two of arousal, similar to the walls of patrols, similar to the $30 billion aircraft carrier you just set out into the middle oceans. Do not push it. I'm nervous. Something is off kilter. It is beyond words. It is beyond poetry, beyond Milton and Sappho. It is beyond Pass and Koan. It is beyond all the African drummers. It is closer to the ashes of South Sudan. is closer to the green skulls of a Mexican state I cannot mention. And the massacres, the massacres, so many massacres in plain sight. push it, we will fall, leaves or snow. It is that simple. We will not have to wait for three billion more years to perish as the solar orb dissolves and cuts the forces that hold us. Do not push, do, do not listen to the war, do not push. Do not listen to the war troubles inside you. Come here, come here where we sit. Come here where we sit in this annex between walls of a nondescript house, where we shudder, where we write and string the guitar, the fervent bones we spin on the floor. Do not push it. So, so, so I moved on to this piece called Touch the Earth once again. And, and it is good to, to touch the earth once again. Remember that book uh, Alan uses? Remember that book? Uh, what was it? 1968, 69, it was called Touch the Earth. And what, what I wanted to talk about was the people that always touch the earth and that are not looked at, known, invisibilized, touch the earth once again. This is what we do. And Melodia is going to come in and out with this one. This is what we do. This is what the cotton truck driver does. This is what the tobacco leaf roller does. This is what the washerwoman and the laundry worker does. This is what the grape and artichoke worker Not to mention the cucumber workers, not to mention the spinach and beet workers, not to mention the poultry woman workers, not to mention the packing house workers and the winery workers and the lettuce and the broccoli and the peach and apricot and squash and apple and that almost magical watermelon and the speckled melon and the honeydew, the workers, 
This is what they do. Notice, notice how they bend into fires no one sees. Notice their ecstatic colors and their knotted shirts. Notice where they cash their tiny and wrinkled checks and pay stubs, stand in that small town, desert sundry store. Then they walk out, they do, and stall for a moment, they do underneath this colossal tree with its condor wings, shedding solace for a second or two. Notice how they touch the earth for you. Roll under the waves. Uh, Pancho's gonna come in and we're gonna roll one way or another. And uh, uh, let, let me stop for a split second and thanks the musicians up to this point. I mean, you know, uh, they're just doing so great. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And so let's, let's do roll under the waves. Uh, you know, when we write, it's, you just flow, you know, you just flow, you wanna flow. And uh, most of these poems are, are like that. I remember asking a student in my class, what are you going to read? Today's student, we're going to read poetry today. And he stood up, he said, well, I want to do a flow. He said, what are you going to do? I'm just going to flow. I'm going to flow, huh? OK, go ahead and flow. <laughs> so, uh, so we're going to do that. You know, uh, We're going to flow as best as we can. Uh, OK, Pancho, so we're just going to flow. Uh, I guess we'll come in and out. Something's going to happen. It's called "Roll Roll Under the Waves," and and this is back to the same 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 idea. You know, every day we get more illegal. It's the same same voice or same something. It's the same uh, response. You know, trying to trying to get at the response, trying to hold uh, the prism. We roll under the waves, not above them. We body surf and somehow we lose the momentum. There are memories trailing us, empty orange and hot pink bottles and medicines left behind. Buried next to Saguaro, there are baby backpacks in a thousand shoes. and a thousand gone steps leading in the four directions without destinations. There are men laying face down forever and women dragging under the fences and children still running with torn faces all the way to Tucson leathery and peeling. There are vigilantes with skull dust on their palms and the trigger and the sputum and the moon with its pocked hope and its blessings and its rotations into the spikes. <laughs> there is a road forgotten in a tiny sweet roof of twigs and a black griddle threaded with songs like the one about el contrabando from El Paso. There is nothing. Da 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 da
Forgotten too, and a stone in life branded and tied and thrown into the tin patrol box with flashes of trees. Do not forget. Do not forget. Do not forget. Do not forget in knife shaped rivers and the face of my mother loose and water running next to the animal still thrashing, choking. The water comes from the sky. The water comes from the sky. The low burnt voices, violin, muffled screams and rings of roses across. The mountains. I'm not a paid protester. We won't move. We won't move. You're a paid protester. I am. I am. I am. I am. No. We know you are being paid. Where is the reward? Where <laughs> is the reward? No. We know you are being paid at this very moment. I am a believer. I am. I am a believer. No, we know you are being funded by shadow investors. I only. I don't even have a laptop. That is incorrect. We know that you meet with shadow investors interested in overturning our structures. I do not have a laptop or a cell phone. I am not concerned with your structures. As a matter of fact, you do not have any cell phone structures at this time. That is correct. You cannot see me. That's what you I mean. am in the shadows. That's what you have been instructed to say. We know. You know? How no. can you know? No, you do not. You have been instructed to launch a spiral, a ring across the edifice to install a fracture, a severance, a crevice. What are you saying? I mean, how do you know? We know you do things and then you do them. I'm protesting, okay? I'm protesting. That is all. No, you're not. No, no you're not. I'm here of my own free will. There is no such thing. I mean, that's why I'm protesting. And you are paid. You are paid. You are paid. Listen, I'm protesting out of my own free will. There is no such thing. How about some candy? You want some candy? You're bribing me. I know it. You're bribing me.
Wait, I don't do that, okay? I don't do that. Of course, of course. How about, how about, I got ginseng. I got ginseng. No way, no way, never. Here, look, take, take, take my frog, take my frog. You gotta be kidding, okay? Take it. You are. You are. You know. You know what? You're out of your mind, okay? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. It's a meditation frog. How about that? It's a meditation frog. We're getting nowhere. We're, we're getting nowhere. Excellent. 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 We are on the way. I'm hitting, I'm hitting the button. I'm hitting the button, okay? I'm gonna hit the button right now. <laughs> Get out of your bubble. I'm hitting the button. What button? Wow. Wow. I'm hitting it. It's not the deportation button. Push it, push it. You're tricking me, okay? You're tricking me. You are out of your gourd, sir. It's a mass deportation button. It's a mass hypnosis button. It's a mass hypnosis button. I don't want, I don't want to push it. Push it. <laughs> that's the, that's the, <laughs> That's the, that's the, uh, I'm not a paid protester. Let's give a big hand to Francis Wong <laughs> and all the musicians. Um, you know, let's, you know, it's so different, huh? It's so different, Zoomlandia. Let's, let's end with, uh, uh, let's end with, Let's end with, I'm, I'm stuck all of a sudden. Let's end with um, address book for the, oh, 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 oh. Let's end with this. Let's end with this. This was a very long piece that got very short because Alan Zoldowski says you really have to look at the poem and, and then really trim it down, huh, Alan? I also want to thank Alan and the Poetry Center and San Jose State and everyone. This is called Border Fever, 105.7 degrees. Um, so let's, let's all, all the musicos and musicians just pop in. It's a short piece. Border Fever, 105.7 degrees. And let's, let's remember our children uh, that were separated uh, let's remember them for coming all the way from Guatemala, Honduras, actually from all over the world. And let's remember how young they were, seven years old, eight years old, early teens, babies. And let's remember how they were left, split apart, and put in these so-called detention centers and in these cells. Let's remember how they were treated and let's remember to change it. Border fever, 105.7 degrees. And this is dedicated for Jacqueline Amay Rosemary, 
seven years old from Guatemala with a fever of 105.7, who died in custody, and for eight-year-old Felipe Gomez Alonso, also from Guatemala, who died under custody of Customs and Border Protection, December 24, 2018. And of course, for all migrant and immigrant children and their families separated on the road north. Why do you cry? Those are not screams you hear across the cage. It is a symphony, the border guard says. There is a girl up ahead made of sparkles. Is she me or is she dead? On the custody floor, 105.7 degrees. Where do I go? Where did they go? Where do I go to breathe no more? A lost flame, a firefly, pressing for freedom. Where did she go? Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Francis, Francis Wong, John Carlos Perea, Melody Takada, Jimmy Biala, Arlene, and the whole team, and Robert, and the whole team, and all of you. Thank you so much, and Janice, for beautiful, beautiful conversation, poetry, remembrances, mom, your video, the mercado, soul talking and Arlene for your singing and your voice and the ukulele and your truth and happiness and all of you for your healing. I thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Ohana. Thank you so much. You. And Jose loves you, and I'm going to now unmute everybody so that you can hear the hear the love coming through. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Alan. Yes, yes. Yeah, Alan Soldovsky, give a shout out there. Uh, hey. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, I've got to go make kimchi tacos in honor of Juan Felipe. <laughs> oh, Juan, thank you so much. Uh, and to the musicians as well. What a fantastic organization of uh, performances. And it worked and it was brilliant. Before uh, we get to the q and I just wanted to thank uh, our board member, Lisa Medley, who is curator for Third Thursday at uh, Willow Glen Library with Linda Lappin. And later this month, we'll have Peter Neal Carroll. And I also want to uh, welcome and announce also and thank Brandon Liu, our newest board member who just recently graduated from San Jose State's creative writing program. And uh, he's been uh, participating in every uh, program and was uh, also reading last night for the uh, open mic. And hope uh, you all join us tomorrow, Saturday, for Veterans of Life Write, um, a fantastic program. Uh, featuring many of our veterans and uh, 
uh, participants in the Veterans Right program, now known as Veterans of Life Right, and that will be hosted by Amy Meyer tomorrow at five o'clock. And uh, now, uh, if anyone would like to ask a question of our guests, um, just simply find at the in the uh, particip under your participant uh, name. You can raise a hand or go to the chat, and we will uh, we will get to you. Thank you so much, uh, Janice, Arlene, Juan Felipe. Thank you, Melody and Francis, John Carlos Perea, and Jimmy Biala. Fantastic performance again. Uh, do we have any questions for our guests? Just wanted to ask then as a poet's, poet laureate, Janice, uh, uh, what would you uh, like to see with your tenure going forward, uh, particularly in this time for youth uh, and their uh, spirit uh, to uh, create and how would you like to advance that with your tenure? Ooh. Wow, Rob, you're asking a, a really good question. I want to be honest. <laughs> I want to be honest. And um, I think I'm a little sad because I was told this week that perhaps the Youth Poet Laureate program won't continue after I'm not in this position anymore. Mm. And I think that is a, an entire failure to end something that hasn't even begun yet. And so I'm hoping that everyone here can help me <laughs> tell people that um, this program needs to happen, not only now during my tenure, but for the future. Um, I, I, want, I, I hope that this program isn't just for mine to start, for me to start, but for everyone to, to continue so I know that might be news for people, um, but yeah, I was just told that this week. And I, I think it's hard because our our city is, um, our county is uh, going through a lot. Um, and so I hope that we can, I, I hope that, I don't even know how to start with the question or answer the question about what spirit I hope youth can like continue when I'm still sort of thinking about how, um, it just may not even happen for longer than a year. So I'm kind of sitting with that and I hope that we can all just like tell everybody, <laughs> tell everybody about the program and how necessary it is. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really all I'm thinking about. Oh, thanks. I see Arlene in the chat. Arlene says, we got you. We will make it go. And all of you can write <laughs> your um, council person uh, to, you know, express your support for this program and uh, as an opportunity for youth and to expand and embrace the culture in, in this valley. Uh, all cultures that need that expression uh, and that vision that you provide and Arlene and Juan Felipe as uh, the California and the National, National Laureate. I have a Question here from Dolores Loera. What is their current inspiration? I guess this is to all of you. What do they recommend for people right now in this world? How are they feeling? How are they releasing that? And how can we help get involved? So to you, Janice or Arlene or Juan Felipe. Uh, I feel like what we just shared is one way to get through it. I feel like, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's just no uh, end to the way things are right now that could uh, potentially just put us in a, into complete despair. Um, and you know, I think it's it's all about uh, 
What does Francis say? Juan Felipe, what does Pancho say? We'll get there. We're going to make it somehow, right? Just like, yeah. we need to be there to lift each other up. Yeah. Uh, and I know folks have heard me say that so many times, and I still mean it, uh, because if we can't come together in that kind of space, in that kind of energia, uh, energy, then, um, you know, they, <laughs> you know, the ones who want to push that mass deportation button, uh, <laughs> they're going to push it, you know, so uh, yeah. we're going to drown them out with poetry, with art, with dance, we'll drown them out with Francis's mad, crazy saxophone skills, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and of course, we're going to feel down you know my heart's going to everybody right now it's uh it was a very difficult time you know you have to just look outside and we're blessed to be here on zoom and uh you know i'm i we don't have ac but i'm inside you know we're inside we're not uh taking in the the air quality of in the 200s and 300s you know like our our angels the farm workers are and uh you know people who don't really have a choice um, that's right. That's it. <laughs> well, I think you're right. You know, it's what I think what happened tonight, and uh, the questions too. You know, this is this is good. Uh, you know, I uh, dialogue and conversations and informality. You know, which is uh, was beautiful. You know, the your voices just talking about yourselves, ourselves. But I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, Arlene and Janice, and uh, with your presentations, they were just you, you know, they weren't like, this is me, the poet, and now, now I'm going to come back to me. It, it was you. And that made me really, really happy. <laughs> I was really, really happy. And uh, so I was right, right there, you know, right there with you. And I think that's, that's what, that's, that's the, that's the answer. As we try to be this or try to be that, or we run this way, or we hide down here, or we or we turn around, or we don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's that's uh, maybe that's not us, you know. Maybe that's not us. Mm -hmm. So it's good to be who, who you are, you know. It's good to be who you are. It's so easy to get pulled by the by the riptide, isn't it? I, I've been pulled by the riptide to bits. You know, the, the air here, the fires, the distortions of uh, information, uh, what's on television. Uh, I'm in a little, as you can see, this little palace of uh, everything. <laughs> uh, and it kind of gets, I kind of get uh, crushed a bit. I just start doing one thing over and over and over. It's fine to write, but it becomes something that's done over and over and it kind of, the, the 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 magic the magic is uh, lessons yeah it's smaller so it's good to be just like just like you were uh, Arlene and and Robert and and Janice that, I think you should just tell people you should talk to people just like you talked tonight <laughs> and we will be healed because uh, that's 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 it right there it really is not a formula right there's not a, there's no formula uh, yeah. just be uh, be yourself, be your natural self, your natural self, without fear, uh, with all those negative thoughts that, that are going to take place tomorrow, we think, or are reaching back to a time that was perfect, uh, or just folding ourselves down into small, a small cube, or, or hiding, or being afraid. So to be ourselves, all of a sudden, is quite a task. And, I, and that's why I was so happy. Mm. Robert, you know, how you introduced everybody, very, very warm and, and kind and appreciating and accepting, welcoming. And Arlene, same, same feeling, you know, welcoming and, and caring and singing. And then, uh, uh, you know, fa familia and your words and your poems. And Janice also. I think that's that's there's that's it. If we want something beyond that, we're asking for too much. 
you know, so I'm going to turn this on again and again. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. You're the answer. And I'm going to have to work on myself, but that's why I'm saying this, because I think I saw, I saw a way. Tonight I saw a way, and you all did that. I saw the way out for me. I go, oh, yeah, Arlene, okay. Robert, yeah, Janice, of course, oh, right. Oh, man. What, what breath, what fresh mm -hmm. air tonight from you. And I was here kind of robotic, trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to hang on to something. <laughs> That's how it is. But you, you are the answer. Tonight, we're so happy. We have a question here from Mighty Mike McGee and uh, also from Jenkba. It's... Um, what would you recommend to a parent guardian who wants their young ones to read and write poetry? How to jumpstart? And this is to everybody. Well, Arlene and Janice are the jumpstarters. <laughs> you, uh, you, instead of Toys R Us, well, I think, I guess Toys R Us is gone now, right? <laughs> Take them like. <laughs> to do with my kids when uh, when we weren't running around outside somewhere was uh, take them to starving musician and let them bang around on the drums and like uh, luckily we knew the guy had drum department guy over there right Jimmy <laughs> so uh, you just you know encourage them uh, at a young age if you can or or whatever age they're at now um, to just try different things you know I know it's a and I, I'm such a hypocrite because I, you know, I'm, I'm on social media all the time. I'm on my phone, you know, I'm looking at too many things online and, um, you know, two of my kids are super into gaming. One of them's totally into K-pop and, you know, uh, Instagram. And so it's like, well, what happens if we just shut that down for a while, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily my kids, they do like to play music. Um, and, and play ukulele and, and dance for sure. Well, we're, we're Filipinos, so that's like a given. But, um, you know, I, I see in the chat room one of the questions um, along with Mike's was kind of how do you sneak more poetry into students' learning? And I, that kind of made me laugh. You know, I was like trying to sneak vegetables into their lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it, man. You just uh, search up, ask your friends, ask your uh, friends for books. Man, Juan Felipe has so many great kids books. <laughs> Clyde Down Boy, um, Cilant uh, Super Cilantro Girl, <laughs> Skate Man, nah, I mean, like, I don't know, you, you write like a book a week. I can't keep up. <laughs> this one just came in the mail the other day, so. <laughs> <laughs> you Your kids need to see you read also. Let me just start there. If you want your kids to pick up a book, if they don't see you pick up a book, yeah, you gotta you gotta plant that. Yeah, yeah. just like just like you were tonight, you know, Arlene and Janice. That's that's the answer. Once again, uh, it's a very natural thing. If you try to do the thing, then you're gonna get stuck. But if you just be, you express yourself naturally and put a video in there and. You're like this, and then your mom's over here. You're going to the mercado, you do some shopping, and uh, the ukulele comes in like that. See, that's the poetry right there, right? That's that's the that's the poetry taking place. If we try to frame it and then formulate it, it's going to be tough. If the children are playing games and gaming, you know, my three three year old granddaughter, she goes like this. She gets a phone and goes like this and puts on a little game. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, uh, but it's a natural thing. For example, uh, we uh, we lived in the, in the trailer that my father made out of boards, and it was one room, a billion rooms in it, but it was really one room. It was a kitchen, it was a bedroom, it was a playroom, it was every room in the world. It really was one room. And uh, my mom would tell me stories. She would play word games with me. She would tell me riddles. Fui al mercado, compré bellas, vine a la casa, lloré con ellas. I went to the marketplace, I bought beautifuls. I came home and I cried with them. What is that, Juan? What is it? What is that? You know, what's the answer to the riddle? 
So there I was. Fui al mercado, compré bellas, vi en la casa, lloré con ellas. I went to the marketplace, I bought beautiful balls, I came home, and I cried with them. Uh, that's a uh, uh, cr crack with them. Uh, let's see, I cried with them, so that was uh, uh, cebollas. <laughs> that was onions. <laughs> so, so things that don't look, don't feel and look like or sound like it's a poetry uh, project happening, it's happening. Because then we were playing with words. We started to play with words and we started to sound out. I started to sound out the riddles. Well, that, there I was. That was like, you know, lesson four. You know, uh, think, uh, talking riddles, repeating riddles, saying them out loud, trying to guess what the meaning is. And that's like four steps into poetry already. You know, you're deep, you know, like algebra poetry already. <laughs> so that happened all the time. Right? And then my mom got the photos. You know, this is your abuelita. Her name was Juanita, and she came from Mexico City, got on a train, and I was with her, and we had some oranges, and I uh, was around 19, 18, and then that's all we had. And then we came all the way, all the way to Juarez, and we didn't have anywhere to go, so we found a little room, and we, you know, we slept on the bricks, and that's how it was, sleeping on bricks, and that's how it was. And uh, your uncles, Roberto and Geno and Chente, they, they, they crossed the border and then they, they se ingresaron. They registered to be soldiers at Fort Bliss. Oh, Fort Bliss? Yeah, Fort Bliss. <laughs> oh, and, and were you were in Juarez sleeping on brick? Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. see, that was a natural thing. And yet I was getting story. I was getting the, the voyage, the, the depth of it and the, 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 the impossibility of it, and the bravery of it, all of it in one, all in one moment. And then my uncles, they took off, and that way, that way we got, that way we could cross over Juanito, because they went to the Fort Bliss and they became soldiers, so then we could cross over. So, you know, here's a photo of the three of us, all that stuff. So that's how natural it is, right? That's how natural poetry is. Just tell your story. Share it, read it, the photographs, there's words, imagination starts boiling. Yeah, but you can also do, you know, exercises and stuff. I got I got it all I got it all through stories and riddles and nighttime, you know. La luna, wow, la luna, oh, the moon, la luna. Yeah. And the wolves howling. <laughs> they used to howl at night, right? And the Protestants are living next door. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's tambourines and religious stuff happening. There's a wolf's howling. The moon is coming down. It's, it's out in the desert in a little trailer. And the amber light, you know, and the candles and the kerosene lamp making shapes on the roof. Ah, oh, yeah, you can't beat that. So that's our story, right? Whatever we have, wherever we come from, the stories we can bring, and that's poetry is cooking. Poetry is cooking right there. It's like the pots are boiling. Poetry is cooking. Yeah, so so yeah. That's, that's how I, you know, uh, my mother, my mother uh, performed it, you know, and talked it. And, yeah, and we sang little songs together, just like Arlene did. We sang together. I got a guitar in, in 10th grade. Yeah, you should have a guitar, Juanito, because, you know, and when you feel lonely, you can have your guitar. And I was an only, I mean, I've been an only child. I was an only child. It's a whole other story. Uh, so, yeah, she was right. She's supposed to seem, you know, you know, philosophical. Tenth grade, you get philosophical. So, uh, philosophical, you know, reading, you know, Dostoevsky and, you know, Zen poetry. And <laughs> so, she, so the guitar was cool. It was cool. And it was true. I could really sing and not sing. I mean, I could, I had a partner, my guitar partner, and that was good. You know, that was good. So, so whatever you can do, you know, tin cans, whatever you got, you know. Yeah. Right? Tin cans, you know, wood, you know, pens, you know, you know collect pens, you know. Look at it, orange, naranja, naranja. Uh huh. <laughs> 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 you were sharing, I think, um, on a, at a conference, and it's on YouTube. Uh, uh, 
batteries, various 10 batteries. And, and one of the batteries is um, a poem doesn't have to be a poem. And uh, I was sharing that with my kids and uh, oh my God, they just started cranking it up. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun. <laughs> yeah, a poem doesn't have to be a poem. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good part. They don't tell us that in school, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A poem doesn't have to be a poem. It can just be life, you know? It can be life. It could be itself. Yeah. It could be itself. Whatever you got, you know? Like the, the letters our parents wrote to each other, little letters, you know? My oh. father wrote a love letter to my mom way back. I mean, my father was born in 1882. But he wrote her a, 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 love, a love letter. And my mother still had it, you know. And it wasn't a fountain pen ink. And my father never went to school. Imagine a fountain pen. Wow, it's like a PhD or something. So he wrote in a fountain pen. And he said, um, he said, me gustaría ser un gato. Would love mm -hmm. to be a cat. Y brincar a tu ventana. And jump on your window. Y decirte, meow, meow. And say to you, Meow, meow. <laughs> that was a love letter. <laughs> and I said, that's cool, you know? That's so cool. You want to, I would like to be a little cat. It was a fountain pen ink. And jump on your window, found really nice handwriting, and say to you, meow, meow. <laughs> that was beautiful, I mean. <laughs> and that's how it works. Juan Felipe, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. It was a great pleasure and a great honor, and especially on this occasion and um, at this time uh, with, with so much uh, trouble. Um, your love and embraces um, are greatly appreciated. Truly, and you too, Arlene and Janice. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and, and sending us your blessings. And um, we will make it work. Folks, uh, write, write to the city, support your local arts organizations, um, support each other through the arts uh, mm. at home. And um, don't let uh, the current climate constrict your imaginations for what is possible. Mm. Don't let it dim your light, because yeah. together we will join our light and shine it through yeah. to the real future. That's right. All right. Yeah. And um, thank, you, thank you again. I'm going to uh, go out with a little bit of music. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Juan. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Arlene. Thank you, Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Robert. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Thank you Robert. Thanks, Janice. Thank you. 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 You know we've got to find a way.